Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. Amplifier is quite strong. It's a reads kind of strangely, but in practice this just turns into a giant 4 mana creature that uh, can kind of take over the game by itself and plays best in a gruel deck where your average creature size is going to be larger. So Amplifier, definitely a powerful rare here. Taking a look at the uncommons, both Incubation and Congruity and Mockery are quite bad. Cry of the Carnarium is kind of situational. Usually the Orzhov deck has a lot of afterlife creatures, so you don't want to be exiling your own stuff with this. And Ragdos is usually pretty aggressive too. So Cry of the Carnarium doesn't fit into the kind of normal Orzhov or Ragdos decks, but sometimes you'll end up with a more controlling black deck. And then Cry of the Carnarium is a fine addition, of course. And then looking at the commons, the best one's probably the Knight Arbiter, which is quite strong and Azorius. But uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to go with the Amplifier here. Second pick, Soroform Hybrid, one of the best commons in the set. 2 mana 2-2 two -two with a relevant ability, turning into a 6-6 six -six late in the game that can attack right away as a 6-6. Six -six. So kind of like a 6-6 six -six with haste. What else do we have? Not much, this pack is quite weak. Again, all the uncommons are pretty bad here. Lizrog is usually a win more card, sometimes it can make the cut in the Simic decks, but not always. Clear the stage, pretty expensive removal, minus 3, doesn't kill much that you care about killing in the late game. And then Rally to Battle is pretty situational, um, there's not a ton of go-wide decks in this format. So plus 1, plus 3 to the team on tap could be a powerful effect, but there aren't many decks that can fully take advantage of this. And uh, yeah, the other commons, I mean Trumpeter's fine. Wrecking Beast you'll sometimes play as a curve topper in a green deck. Of course the gates are always valuable in the set. Biomancy is fine, but easily take the hybrid here. Alright, so now we've got a bit of a decision. So right now we're setting up for potentially being a red-green gruel deck. The Gateway Sneak is a powerful card and kind of one of the payoffs for the gate deck. We passed up on a couple gates already, there's usually one gate in every pack. Having access to Sneak plus a bunch of gates is an easy way to draw a ton of extra cards, but that would of course add another color to the deck. Usually the gate decks are kind of some combination of uh, blue, green and a little bit of red sometimes for gates ablaze, a bit of white for uh, the angel at 6 mana. Sometimes you'll splash a bit of black for removal, but there's no gate payoff cards in black. So the gate deck is usually lots of different colors, but I would say blue-green is usually the core. And then, uh, of course, a sneak would fit in nicely. We could just take like a Simic Guild Gate in case we want to speculate on splashing blue in our Gruul deck, or if we just want to start picking gates in case we do get some gate payoffs, like maybe a Gatebreaker Ram or Gateway Sneaks in the future. Could take a light up the stage. It's not at its best in Gruul, since the convert mana costs of cards in Gruul are a lot higher than the ones in Rakdos. So if we get like two four drops then we might be unable to cast both, but it could still be the pick here since there's not much else that would fit into a Gruul deck here, like a Scuttle Gator is usually filler and the Rubble Slinger is not particularly exciting, same with the Maka. Let's take the Lido stage for now and kind of see where we end up. Maybe we can get the curve down a little bit and then it's still a fine addition. And uh, there's always a chance we pivot into a Rakdos deck, in which case the Amplifier gets a bit worse, but the Light of the Stage gets a bit better. Alright, well, we're not seeing a ton of Rakdos flavored cards here. We do see another Soroform Hybrid, which is pretty tempting, although we're also seeing a lot of powerful blue cards. Sphinx of New Prav is excellent. Kind of see these double uh, colored multicolor cards, a whole cycle of them, and they're all quite strong and a great incentive to kind of move into that color. Arrestor's Admonition, probably the best blue common, or at least a contender, so that's also quite good. Probably still gotta take the Soroform Hybrids, and then we'll keep our eye on future blue cards here, like getting a sneak in the previous pack, Arrestor's Admonition here, definitely a sign that maybe blue is open, 
Although, to be honest, two uncommons and a rare are missing, so that doesn't tell us a whole lot, necessarily. So what are we seeing here? Call Guildmage is quite good, if we were to move into Ragdos, although now with double Sorform Hybrid we would probably want to be playing green. Uh, summary Judgment is fine, although it doesn't pair with any of our other cards, since red-white is not really an archetype in the set and green-white isn't. So with the cards we currently have, we could potentially kind of move into Simic and abandon the red cards, we could move into Rakdos, abandon the green cards, or we could try and make some sort of three-color deck. And there is quite a bit of mana fixing between the gates and the lockets that we can make that work. Although, with what we have, there's nothing really, like, splash-worthy necessarily. Could just take a Steeple Creeper, which, even without the blue mana, can be a fine addition to a Gruul deck, like it triggers the two mana boar, giving it plus one plus one and vigilance for a turn. Flames of the Race Boar, there's some other cards that care about for power. So the Steeple Creeper is still a fine addition, plus if we pick up some like blue mana fixing with some Simic Guild Gates, we might still get access to the Steeple Creeper's ability in uh, red-green. Other consideration, Footlight Fiend is not exactly what you want in Gruul. Could make for an okay sideboard card, but we're playing best of one here. And then uh, called Guild Mage, again, if we wanted to potentially pivot into Rakdos is a consideration as well. And I guess even the Rakdos Guildgate worth mentioning if we wanted to splash black in red-green. The card that comes to mind in black that we would like to splash in red-green is probably a uh, get the point, the five mana removal spell that's red and black, as a, a card we could easily splash and would be a good splash card to begin with. So, yeah, a lot of options. I think I'm leaning probably between the Creeper and the Spider. Spider, not as good as it is in M20, I think, in this set. 3-5 reach is still fine, there are a lot of flyers in the set. So it's definitely a playable card that you will sometimes main deck. But uh, it's also 5 mana, there's a lot of 5 mana cards that we can end up with in Gruul. Between the 4-4 with Riot, for example, the 6-5 that has to attack each turn. Kind of forgetting the names here from the set. But there's a lot of good fives for Gruul, so we shouldn't prioritize the Mammoth Spider. I think I'm taking the Creeper here, but it's close. Some okay black cards here, Trumpeter and Plague White. But we're starting to move further and further away from Rakdos and more kind of solidifying the green. So potentially straight up Simic or potentially red-green with maybe a blue splash in mind for the Steeple Creeper's ability. So I could just take the Guild Gate and have access to the Steeple Creeper's ability in a Gruul deck. I could also take Skitter Eel and can speculate on moving out of red and just be straight up Simic. Since we did notice from some of the previous packs that maybe blue was slightly open, uh, black also seems open, can necessarily say the same for red, so we're not seeing a ton of red cards here. But regardless, both Simic Guildgate and Skitter Eel would be fine picks if we were to move into Simic, since gates, besides having the gate synergies, of course, are just valuable pieces of mana fixing. So if we take the Guildgate, we'll probably still play it in a Gruul deck, just to enable Steeple Creeper, and we'll also play it in a Simic deck, whereas Skitter Eel we're probably only playing if we move into Simic. I'm not gonna splash for it. So between the two cards, a card that's going to make our deck almost every time is Simic Guildgate. So I think I'll take that over the Skitter Eel here. Even though if we do end up in straight Simic, the Skitter Eel could be slightly more valuable than a Gate, but the Gate is still a perfectly fine addition. Seventh big Gate Colossus should not be happening. This card is pretty busted. If you have like anywhere between, I would say, three and five Gates, then the Gate Colossus is quite good. And of course, the more the, the better the Gate Colossus gets. So that's an easy pickup, and now we'll start prioritizing gates even more. And not much here that we want. Could just take an Axe Bane Beast. Not an exciting card, but if we need a 4-drop, this will do. Uh, Thought Collapse, if we were to move into Simic, would probably be the next best card. And alright, we wield a Mammoth Spider that I could take. The Goblin Gathering deck doesn't come together very often. And it's also usually better in Rakdos than in Gruul. So I'll just take a spider now. And I think I'll take an open the gates over Wrecking Beast. Wrecking Beast would be a card that I'm 
happy to have as a one-off in this type of deck, especially with Amplifier in it as well, potentially. But Open Gates, now with a semi guild gate and a Gate Colossus, is a, a pretty nice addition too. Maybe makes it easier to splash a certain card. Probably don't need to take Maka when we have Double Sorrowform Hybrid. It is important to have enough 2-drops if we're trying to be aggressive. Rubble Slinger is not too impressive. I think it's more likely that the Maka makes her deck than the Rubble Slinger. Either way, it probably doesn't matter a whole lot. And now we'll take a Speculative Thought Collapse in case we move into blue. I think that's better than Slime Bind. Don't want to splash Slime Bind. Another Mammoth Spider is probably unneeded. Footlight Fiend's unlikely to make the cut. I'll just take a Spider, I guess, in case we don't end up with any of the other 5 drops. Alright, so looking at our deck right now, we've got a solid base for like a red-green Gruul deck. Uh, don't have any removal spells yet, so hopefully we can pick up some of the uh, 3 mana, plus 2, plus 2 and fight. Some uh, Skewer the Critics would be good as well. We've got some uh, solid red-green removal spells, even the 2 mana instant that lets us fight would be okay at this point. Alright, opened one of the worst rares, sadly, Lavinia. But we did open a pretty solid Gruul Uncommon in Bullrack Clan Crusher. There's also another semi guild gate in the pack that we should keep in mind here with uh, Gate Colossus. Uh, anything else? Vandal is fine. Acrobat not too exciting. So it's mostly just the Crusher and the Gate that we're looking at here. Let's take the Crusher. Plays quite well with our Adapt creatures, of course. Can remove the counters and then adapt again. Here, probably gonna have to take the Guild Gate. Solid piece of mana fixing as well as enabling Gate Colossus. Giving up on a second Blade Juggler kind of hurts since this is probably the best black common. Very good card, but uh, kind of given up on black at this point. I could still play a Rixmani Reveler without the black mana, just as a 2-2 that lets us loot. And if I do pick up a Rakdos Guildgate or maybe a Gateway Plaza, I might be able to spectacle this later in the game. Alternatively, I could just take the semi Guildgate and then have an additional blue source for the Steeple Creeper. And then, uh, of course, make our Gate Colossus better as well. I think this is a close decision. A Reveler, of course, just being a 2-mana two 2-2 two is not exciting, but can have potentially a lot of upside if we get to Rakdos Guildgate or Gateway Plaza. Another bunch of good black commons here. Grotesque Demise, Plague White. So, if we knew we were going to open these cards, being Rakdos from the start might have paid off at this point, but of course there's no way of knowing what uh, cards we're going to open in the future. Looking at our curve at the moment... The Simic Guildgate is a bit cleaner in the sense that we don't have to worry about picking up any black mana fixing for the Reveler, because if I do play Reveler, I do actively want to look for the Black Splash. And if we take the semi guild gate, it also becomes easier to pick up future blue cards we might want to splash. So I guess I'll go with the guild gate here. Although there is a non-zero chance that we could wield this if we take the reveler. It's close. Alright, more Haragdos cards. The Gruul cards not really showing up. And a Mortify as well in the pack, so lots of powerful cards, but none that fit in our deck. There's like a Stony Strength and a Storm Strike, both pretty mediocre tricks. Could just take an off-color gate just to have an extra gate. But uh, I don't think I want that here. So I guess I'll take the Storm Strike. Alright, now we're talking. Collision Colossus is a much better trick to have access to. This card's quite powerful, and of course, lots of flyers to take out with Collision as well. So let's take that. Another Sword Form Hybrid will do nicely. Rubble Belt Recluse I would also take, but I think I'd still take the hybrid over it, just because this is a relevant early play, and then turns into a 6 mana 6-6, six, six, which is pretty close to a 5 mana 6-5. Six, five. And uh, yeah. Another Steeple Creeper would have been fine too, with all the blue fixing we have. Easy Skewer the Critics here. And not much here, I guess. Bedank Bedazzle for double rats can still be a solid removal spell, so I'll probably still take that here. I mean, is there any world where 
I end up splashing black for Blade Juggler. This should not be wheeling. Could just take a Vandal at 3 mana, which would be fine. In order to splash black, we would have to pick up at least a couple of Ragdos Guild Gates. Juggler, not exactly a perfect splash card, since often we want to cast this on turn 3. But even for 5 mana, it's not bad. I could just take the Vandal, and then I don't need to worry about splashing, and this definitely an upgrade over the Rubble Slinger. <laughs> Another Blade Juggler on the wheel. The bots haven't played Ravnica Allegiance in a while, I take it. But there's nothing else we want here. Don't want a turn 3 Dodger, don't want another Burn Bright, don't want a Slime Bind, even if we could splash it. I'll just take a Blade Juggler, even if I don't play it. Just can't, uh, can't pass up on it here. Well, I guess Rakdos was open this draft. The Wrecker might make the cuts. 3-3 three, three Manus for 4 mana is playable. Alright. And then moving into our last pack, so what's our deck kind of missing? A 1 extra 2 drop would be nice. Um, the 3 drops could use a bit more work, Rubble Slinger not especially, something we're interested in playing. And then kind of the 4 drops could also improve a little bit. Axe Pain Beast and Wrecker are kind of on the low end of playable. And then maybe an additional gate payoff card, like a Gatebreaker Ram would be nice. Maybe another Curve Topper at 6 or plus mana. We've got a decent start to a Gruul deck, with a triple hybrid being kind of the highlight, and Amplifier being quite good as well. And of course Gate Colossus, a nice Curve Topper. So what did we open? Mirror March, not very good sadly. It is fun when it works, but often this is just 6 mana, do nothing. So I won't be taking that here. A Clamor Shaman can be good if we have some pump spells to kind of back it up, if we have a very aggressive deck. Our deck is a little bit on the mid-range end of the spectrum, so it's not the perfect Clamor Shaman deck, but it still could be playable. Another Gruel Guildgate would be fine. Recluse would make the cuts over one of the Mammoth Spiders. Uh, I could just take Gruel Guildgate and then Hope to Wheel Recluse. I could take Recluse or Clamor Shaman Hope to Wheel Gruel Guildgate. I don't mind taking the Gruel Guildgate. Then it also becomes even easier to splash any blue cards we find along the way. And of course our Gate Colossus becomes better. Maybe we get past another 7th pick Gate Colossus. I think I'm splashing the, the Shark to Crab here. It's powerful enough to justify it. We might even wield the semi guild gates. Aeromonculus would also be an okay splash card, potentially. But uh, Shark to Crab is probably just better. Alright, not Rescure the Critics is looking good. Uh, Rantorn would also make the cut over Mammoth Spider, I think. But I'll still take a Skewer over it. Ooh, this is an interesting decision. Growth Chamber Guardian, we're not going to get a second one, but even just a 2 mana 2-2 two -two that adapts into a 4-4 might be better than a 4th Sorform Hybrid. So I think I'll take Guardian over the 4th Sorform Hybrid here, and then Titanic Brawl would have been fine, uh, Goblin could have been a fine 2-drop as well, but I think Guardian is a little bit better than both. Could splash a Chillbringer potentially. Uh, it's a bit clunky to splash the Combined Guild Mage, even though it can have quite a bit of upside. Probably don't need a second Wrecker, and since it's best of one, we don't need to prioritize the Volley. I'll take a Chillbringer. Make the mana fixing worth it. And Scorchmark is not exactly an insane removal spell in this set. The things you care about killing are usually more than two toughness. And some things you care about you can't even kill with removal, like uh, ill-gotten inheritances, for example. So Rubble Belt Recluse is probably going to be my pick. Probably replacing a Mammoth Spider. Another Steeple Creeper is quite nice. And what about Ragdos Guildgate? I don't think we're splashing black. So Ragdos Guildgate would be an Enter the Battlefield tapped mountain that maybe enables Bedazzle and makes it easier to cast Gate Colossus. Seems marginal. What else are we taking though? Carnival Carnage, I'm not splashing, and just Carnival is not worth it. So I guess this pick doesn't matter a whole lot. 
just take the gate. So yeah, Recluse seems fine, and then I'm probably just not playing any spiders. And I'll take another Axe Bane Beast, not sure if I'll play it though. Might want a Rumbling Rune as a curve topper. We do have a lot of adapt creatures, so the ability could be relevant, and we don't have many curve toppers outside of the Gate Colossus, really. Goblin might make the cuts. Alright, so we ended up with an okay deck, I think. Lots of good two drops, lots of gates for the Gate Colossus. A solid chunk of removal with double secure the critics and collision colossus. So yeah. The start of the draft maybe wasn't too exciting. The second pack especially wasn't great. But I think uh, things kind of corrected themselves in the last pack. So we don't need any black mana. The question is whether or not we play the Ragdos Guildgate anyway. Not sure. We'll take a look later. So at 2 mana we've got Goblin, Guardian, Triple Hybrid, so that's good. At 3 we've got Vandal, Double Creeper, probably don't need Rubble Slinger. And then Skewer as Interaction, Light with Stage is a maybe. 4 mana, Amplifier, Shard to Crab, and then we have to decide between Axbane Beast and Wrecker. Uh, probably one Wrecker, one Beast is my guess. And then at 5, Chillbringer, Double Recluse, Crusher, all seem decent. We've got a Badak has more removal. Rumbling Ruin seems fine, and Gate Colossus. So right now we have 38 cards, and this is with 14 lands. So I need to add uh, at least 2 more lands, probably 3. Could make the case for playing 16 lands plus an Open Gates. Our deck is pretty mana intensive. We've got Sorform Hybrids to adapt at 6 mana. And we've got a lot of fives, so I think 17 lands plus an open gates is probably fine. Maybe light up the stage is not great here. Because yeah, I imagine we light up the stage around like turn 4, turn 5, and we hit like a 4 drop and a 5 drop, then we're only going to cast one of them. So yeah, I could see trimming the light up the stage here. It is nice with the sort of form hybrids, since even in the late game, it's still an impactful card to find with Light of the Stage, and it only costs 2 mana to get it out. But I think we've got enough like mana sinks that we're not gonna need to rely on the card draw from Light of the Stage. Like we have Goblin as a mana sink, Triple Sorform Hybrid, Steeple Creeper can gain flying, we can adapt the Shark to Crab, Crusher can let us re-enable Adapt as well. So we should be fine in terms of late game. Yeah, Gateway Sneak may or may not have made the cut here, had we taken it. Probably would have made the cut on a splash. But uh, yeah, still not too disappointed with where we ended up. Possible we could have had a better Rakdos deck, but uh, our current build is not bad. So let me take a quick look at the mana base. So how many blue sources do we want? So we've got double, semi guild gate, open the gates. So that's already three blue sources essentially. I would like to have at least one island so we can open the gates for an untapped blue source if we need it. So maybe one island's enough. One island, two gates and open gates. So four blue sources for two blue cards, that's more than enough. And then the rest of the mana base. We've got four green sources. Plus five is nine. We do need a lot of green to cast open the gates in the first place, so we don't want to get too greedy in terms of cutting green mana. And right now we have 8 red sources, we do need double red for amplifier. So that's one reason to maybe want a little bit more red. But in general the green is more important since we want to cast the hybrid on turn 2. This seems okay, leaving us with 9 green and 8 red plus open the gates. Ooh, I guess we only have 39 cards. I need to add one more land. Alright, I guess if we get to add a land I might add a mountain. Now we have 9 red sources, 9 green sources, and then 3 blue sources, plus an open the gates. Alright, on the play. Fine opening hand. Probably leading with the Gruul guild gate here. Open the gates. So we've got a bit of a decision in terms of sequencing. I can go Guild Gates plus Open the Gates this turn, and then Curve Creeper into Amplifier, and just get a Mountain with the Open the Gates. 
I could just play a hybrid on turn two, and then next turn I don't have much of a play other than opening gates unless I draw an untapped land for Creeper. So it's a real decision here. I think I like open gates, get a mountain, play semi guild gates. And then I can start curving Creeper into Amplifier. Opponent on double plane so far. Blue whites. Ooh, Deputy of Detention, that's a good one. Although I can kill it with Bedeck. So I could go Amplifier, I could go Hybrid plus Bedeck Bedazzle. I guess Amplifier for now. Let's see what we get. Ooh, a 12-12 Amplifier. Now that's pretty good. So now I could attack, opponent could take 12, or I could bedeck the deputy beforehand. I guess I'm fine bedecking. If they have a pump spell, this is kind of bad. Arrestor Zeal. Alright, I mean, I'm still attacking for 12 here. And then Chillbringer can lock down the Deputy as well next turn, maybe. If her opponent has the 3 damage or 5 damage to a tapped creature, that's not going to kill Amplifier right now. Ministrant is annoying, so tapping that down with Chillbringer would be nice. Eh, just a 4-4 four, four Amplifier, a lot uh, tamer this turn. But still enough to get an attack in here. Although now, now we've got kind of a problem if her opponent does have... 3 damage or 5 damage to tapped creature. Attacking with the Amplifier this turn might not be ideal. So I could see not attacking with the Amplifier and instead just uh, kind of chilling this turn with the Chillbringer and set up an attack for next turn. Or just play an Axe Bane Beast and then Chillbringer next turn to maybe surprise remove the Ministrant as a blocker. I guess maybe Wrecker over Axe Bane Beast. Veteran. Alright, now the Amplifier can start attacking. So hopefully no counter spell for the Chillbringer. Tap down Ministrants. And send in these two. Alright, they did have the Summary Judgment, so I'm glad I didn't attack with the Amplifier last turn. Opponent chumps. Ooh, lumbering battlements. All right. Six, seven. <laughs> Man, this amplifier is doing some work in this deck. At twelve ten this turn. All right, that's attack. So opponent can chump and get their ministrant back. That's fine. This amplifier has been amplified a few times. So draw a recluse and then amplifier becomes a 4-2. So probably just send the Chillbringer this turn. Yeah, Amplifier is a good card, especially in Gruul. Fine opening hand.
Another blue white tech. And again, they kind of had a pause there, so it could be a fairy duelist as well that they're holding on to. Just a Senate courier for now, so I guess we'll play the steeple creeper since that lines up a bit better than the vandal. Probably should have attacked first, although then we do expose a hybrid to a summary judgment. There's a chance they don't block. No, not our Senate courier. Do we want to trade a creeper for a Senate courier? Not really. We could draw a number of pump spells that uh, mean the creeper doesn't trade. But if our opponent goes like high alert, then we might regret not trading while we have the chance. So kind of depends what our opponent's deck has to offer. This turn I'm probably just playing an Axe Bane Beast and then next turn I can play Crusher. Or I could play Guildgate, play a 3-2 Vandal. So I make it more likely that I play Crusher into Adapt Hybrid so I can start tossing counters around with the Crusher. So maybe Vandal this turn makes more sense. In which case if I trade off Creeper for a Courier, the Vandal can maybe start looting as well. Alright, I guess I'll trade. Opponent just takes it, so I guess High Alert is more of a possibility now. Well, hopefully it doesn't happen here, otherwise we're probably dead. Opponent just passes, Amplifier to draw. So now attacking with a Creeper, a lot less tempting since opponent could have all sorts of tricks, including Fairy Duelist, to make it into a bad attack. Could just play an Amplifier, could play a Crusher, they're both pretty valuable. Crusher, of course, great alongside our Riot and Adapt creatures. I guess I'll bait with Amplifier, like I'm not even sure which one of these two is more valuable. But I'm guessing the Crusher is probably a bit better here. In case they have a Counterspell. Uh, Amplifier resolves. Don't really want to attack here. Amplifier, just a 4-4. Four, four. So it is safe to attack into a Fairy Duelist. It could die to a Summary Judgment if we send it here. So given how powerful the Amplifier can be, maybe I should wait. And then this turn, I could play the Crusher, I could adapt the Sorform Hybrids. If I adapt Hybrid, I can attack with the Hybrids. And it also doesn't die to Summary Judgments. I should adapt before attacking, so I don't get uh, blown out by a Judgment in response to adapt after it's already declared as an attacker. So we've got some options, I think. I'll adapt a hybrid and then go from there. So they've got something here. The pose to tap it down and a summary judgment maybe. Yep, all right. So the one two punch here. Fair enough. All right, I guess now I'll attack with the amplifier though. And uh, yeah, steeple creeper can get in there too. And now the Vandal can maybe attack past a single Senate Courier. Wouldn't mind looting away these extra lands at this point, don't need land 7. Locket into Warden, who 4-4 four, four Flyer with Vigilance. That's potentially a problem, although a 12-10 Amplifier requires a chum block from the opponent, so that's pretty nice too. So let's get in there, play Crusher and probably open the gates for a gate. And I'm probably not playing out my mountain to keep it to loot with Vandal, potentially. If I attack with Vandal and draw into Collision Colossus, I could just potentially win the game, but uh, it doesn't seem worth it. Let's just make him chump with the career. And I also don't think I'm playing the gates. Get a Simic one. Probably just holding it. Picked up another land. So I could just trade Crusher for the Flyer, which yeah, in the long term might not be great if we pick up 
an adapt creature, but short term it's not bad. Did our opponent even attack with their Sphinx? I missed it. They might just not have attacked for four. It has Vigilance, so they could have attacked for free. I guess I can attack with a Vandal, loot, and if they block I can still shoot the Sphinx, which would result in a trade, which I guess is fine too. So maybe we'll start there. Opponent draws two. And what do we discard? Mountain, I guess. Alright, there's a sort of form hybrid. Opponent takes three. So I can go Amplifier plus Hybrid, and now I think I'll play Gate since we might want the extra mana with uh, Sorrow Form Hybrids. Keeping the Gate could also be nice if we find a Gate Colossus as a way to get it back from the graveyard. We could cast a Gate Colossus for six. I guess if we're adapting Hybrid we're not doing much else with the one mana, so maybe I should still hold it. Yeah, let's hold it. And then I may or may not shoot the opponent for two with the Crusher. Opponent does have a brand new hand here. Three cards left. Ministrant again. Alright. Can shoot it down with the Crusher, or I can just start dealing damage to my opponents. See what the Chillbringer does here. Goes for the Amplifier. I mean, our opponent is at nine. It doesn't take much to kill them with Crusher activations. So I think I'll start going upstairs. Opponent's probably jumping with the Ministrant, although then we do give them 7, 9 power of flyers, so they also kind of have a 2 turn clock on us, which might not be ideal. Yeah, I kind of want to loot here as well. So I guess I'll do this. Ooh, Collision Colossus. Well, that could just win us the game next turn. Alright, that works, so I can shoot down the Chillbringer with the Crusher. And now I have Collision Colossus to either kill the 4-4 or just kill the opponents. So now we're looking good. <laughs> 12 10 amplifier. Do have to be careful of any bounce spells at instant speed here. So going for Colossus on amplifier while tempting might not be the correct play. I guess I can start by just attacking with everyone. They're kind of in a bad spot no matter what. So playing it safe might be warranted here. Just attack with everyone, see what happens, and uh, take it from there. So as it stands, I would be happy with these trades. So I don't feel the need to go for the Collision Colossus in case our opponent has some instant speed interaction. But if I go for Colossus, of course, I could just win right now. But I'm adding an Axbeam Beast to the board as well, so we'll have plenty of lethal threats. So let's just let damage happen here. And then I guess I'm fine playing another Gates. All right, we're at 12 points at two. We've got three potentially lethal threats. There's no sweepers in blue-white that we need to be worried about. If I was playing against an Orzhov deck, then I might have gone for it here just to make sure they can't top deck a Kaya's Wrath. Another Chillbringer, that's fine. Now they have only two mana untapped, so it's a lot safer to go for the Colossus for lethal. All right, make that three. Only one card in hand though. And there's Gate Colossus. So I guess what I do here is just try and kill Chillbringer with Collision. And if that works, they're dead. Alright, GG's. Alright, so this draft's going pretty well so far. Keep it up. Alright, so we're on the draw. This hand's a bit on the slow side with Double Recluse. 
do have a skewer the critics to kind of stem the bleeding. So I think I'll still keep Colossus also a nice combo with Recluse. And we're on the draw, so we're pretty likely to find a fifth land on curve. All right, drawing a six drop, not ideal. Ideally, I guess we draw a two drop and then a couple lands. But hopefully no more expensive creatures. Footlight Fiend out of an Orzhov deck. Amplifier. All right. So we'll just have to say go. Hopefully we can dodge a Blade Juggler on three here. Since that's how the uh, black aggressive decks start pulling ahead. Infiscope right. of Vampire, still a bit of an issue here. So I might have to secure the critic stat. At least we'll be able to play an Amplifier on Curve, which is nice. Yeah, let's just kill the Vampire here, so we don't fall too far behind. Next turn Amplifier, and then hopefully... a Recluse afterwards with uh, Colossus as backup. Grudian is a good blocker here. So if I had known they would play Grudian, I might have kept... Uh, Skewer the Critics to answer that. Because Grudian, Death Touch just lines up well against our enormous creatures, even Trample, not exactly what we need to get past it. And Recluse kind of uh, attacks face first into a Grudian. So where does that leave us? I could open a gate to just um, make sure I can play my 5 drops. I could play an Amplifier right now. If I draw into the second Skewer the Critics, I can kill Grudian and maybe get an attack in with Amplifier. I think I'll still play the Amplifier here. The odds of drawing a land are pretty high. And then we get to just curve 4 into 5. Do expose Amplifier to something like a Grotesque Demise, which is less than ideal, but oh well. They were gonna get it at some point. Hybrids gives us a play, so... Normally I would grab a Gate here to make it easier to cast Colossus, but now I'm forced to get a Forest. And then I'm totally fine trading Hybrid for Grudian, given our hand. Footlight Fiend attacks for one. We'll just take it. So Inheritance, the opponent's win condition here, so closing out the game quickly of utmost importance. So I'll Probably play my land, attack with hybrid, fine with the trade, and then play Recluse. And by playing the land first, I make them more likely to block, since we could adapt to hybrid otherwise. We do have the Rumbling Rune in hand, so I could have made a different play where I try and set up adapting the hybrid and then playing Rumbling Rune kind of as our finisher. But given that we have two Recluses in hand, getting rid of the Death Toucher seems nice. And we did have a bit of a slower start, so... Ooh, another Death Touch creature. Yeah, that's not great for us. But of course I could Colossus just to push a ton of damage. But then I'm unable to play anything else. So the play might just be to let the trade happen and then play another Recluse and then keep Collision Colossus for later. Or I could play Rumbling Ruin and then maybe Collision Colossus and Recluse in the same turn next turn. And be a bit more mana efficient. I guess I'm attacking since I have to. Death Touch is quite effective against Gruul. That's why the effect on Gate Colossus is so important, since they can block it with Ors of Enforcer or Grudian. I think I'm just playing a Rumbling Rune. So I can uh, double spell next turn, potentially. Since it doesn't look like we're gonna take advantage of the Rumbling Rune's ability anytime soon. Second Inheritance. So now we might just die to those before we kill the opponent in time. Secure would have been nice last turn. Alright, well, let's start attacking. So next turn I'm taking two. If they have a land, they could start sacking Inheritances too. I think I'm happy using Colossus here just to push damage. Mm -hmm. 
So opponent's down to 13, back up to 15, so don't quite have lethal even if we kill the fiend and they don't have another blocker. Also need to keep the one damage from footlight fiend in mind, oof. Imperious oligarch, that's annoying, that's another two blockers essentially, to buy them more time. So what's our ideal draw here? I guess shark to crab would be decent. Chillbringer, something to tap down blockers. So I think I just attack with both, see how they block, and if... I mean, if our opponent takes 12, then they would die to the skewer. I don't think they will take 12, but there's a chance. Alright, opponent does double chump. Fair enough. So had I used skewer, I could have prevented a chump block. Of course, now I can still skewer the spirit token and accomplish the same thing. So how's the race looking like? Can I afford to take one damage from the spirit token or do I kill it right now? Of course I could play an even bigger creature next turn potentially. So I guess we're kind of dead here. If they just sack inheritances two turns in a row. Since I'll go to seven, then to three, and then I'm dead. And I'm not killing the opponent in time. Yeah, I guess I'll still kill the token. They seem to be holding some interaction too. So who knows what that is. Maybe a summary judgment on the Recluse? Yeah, looks like it. In which case, skewering the Oligarch could have paid off, because then they would have been unable to make that play, although they could have also dealt one damage with the Footlight Fiend onto one of our creatures. So yeah, we should be pretty dead now. The Death Touch creatures being pretty key. Usually, Inheritance is not a big deal when playing the Gruul deck, since you can usually apply enough pressure where it doesn't matter, but the Death Touch creatures a great way to kind of prevent those big creatures from chunking in a ton of damage. Bring to Trial as well is another answer, so your opponent's definitely prepared to face Gruul with Death Touch creatures and removal spells for bigger stuff, and then Inheritance to eventually win the game. And now we're just dead to opponent sacking Inheritance and then triggering the second Inheritance on their turn. Don't think we have any life gain to stay alive. Well, Colossus would have been good. Although it also would have gotten exiled by Bring to Trial. This is kind of the perfect answer for Gate Colossus, so it doesn't keep coming back. But at least this would have dodged the uh, Grudian and the Enforcer. So yeah, not sure if we could have done anything different along the way. Probably still would have died given the cards our opponent drew. But still closer than it looked here. Down to one. And that's game. Alright, on to the next one. Pretty good opening hands. Do I open the gates for a gate? I think I do. Just to help out with Colossus. It does mean I don't get to curve Guardian into Vandal, but then I can just adapt the Guardian on turn 3 instead. And get a red gate. So, has to be Gruul. So we can go turn 2 Guardian, turn 3 Adapt Guardian. Mountain helps, so... Now I also have the option of just playing the Vandal. Up against the blue-green. And opponent keeping up something here could be Fairy Duelist. So attacking with a hasty Vandal into Fairy Duelist would be pretty bad. Yeah, let's just attack for two. I'm totally fine if this gets quenched. So now our opponent might be saving the duelist to try and ambush the Gravelhide Goblin. Alright, just a gross spiral, so maybe they didn't have a duelist after all. Alright, so next turn we can attack first and keep up both abilities. Ooh. Well, a Guardian Project is eventually going to win the opponent a game, so it's on us to kind of close out the game as soon as possible. And we do have the tools here. Alright, so... I was going to say, if uh, they did keep up mana to play around Duelist, we should have made sure to attack first, keeping up both the Goblin and the Growth Chamber Guardian's abilities to respond to a potential Duelist. Now, what do I do? 
I can just attack with a hasty Burning Tree Vandal and smack them for 6 while getting to discard land, that seems nice. And probably discarding Mountain. Alright, Shard Crab. So, we've got a powerful hand. Opponent already down to 12. But they've got a Mammoth Spider to stabilize the situation. Although Chillbringer says no thanks. And at this point I'm probably discarding the Gate Colossus. I mean, I don't have to discard anything, but at 7 mana it's going to be pretty far from getting cast. So maybe we can dig for something more useful in the meantime. Opponent down to 6, so they're not looking good. Let's see if they can find a way out. Alright, they've got their own Shark to Crab. So they're still dead on board if they don't have anything else. Although Skewer the Critics probably just burns them out, so we've had some pretty nice top decks here, not gonna lie. Alright, let's attack. Probably should not have... Eh, maybe I should have played my land, don't know if it matters. But I'm not gonna discard anything here. So we'll let them go to blocks. Sure. Let damage happen. And a slime binds. Alright, so... I could pump here and then still secure. I might as well spectacle. Alright, so some lucky top decks bailed us out. Otherwise we would have had to rely on the power of Shark to Crab and Gate Colossus to win the late game. Alright, so we're 3-1, let's keep it up. Alright, another decent opening hand. That will keep... So in terms of sequencing... Probably lead with the Gruel Guild Gates. In case we find an Amplifier, Shark to Crab complicates matters a little bit. So it's kind of a, a coin toss whether we draw Amplifier or Shark to Crab. But we can probably figure out a way to play them on curve. Tithe Taker, so we'll just play first of many Surform Hybrids. Yes, yeah, Celestia, not really a color combination we're used to seeing. So maybe your opponent opened some nice rares in the respective colors that pulled them towards a non-guild deck here. And yeah, Hybrid and Tithe Taker, two good cards so far. So I can attack and then Colossus if they block and otherwise just play another Hybrid. Plus maybe open the gates. Question is, do I get a basic island in case I top deck a Shark to Crab? In that case, I might as well just play the semi guild gates. Yeah, maybe that's the play. Because this way, I don't have to get a basic island when I might want to get more gates in case we draw Gate Colossus. And I still give myself the chance to grab a gate with open the gates later. So I could bedeck the Tithe Taker. It's not a great exchange necessarily. I could just wait until we can adapt Soroform hybrids, which we're looking like we're gonna be able to, since we essentially have six lands here. So I think I'm probably better off just chilling, and then for now just playing hybrid plus open the gates, and then I'm okay not keeping up the deck Bedazzle. Opponent's not in red, so we don't have to worry about any fight spells that we might want to prevent. So yeah, let's do that. And get another gates. Blue one's probably fine. Alright, so we've got the maximum amount of gates in play for Gate Colossus. 
and I concur for Reckless into adapting the hybrid opponent with no play. So far, Incubation, I'll see what they find. Finds a Frilled Mystic. Well, they're pretty far from casting that one. So maybe they are blue-green splashing white, although splashing for Tithe Taker seems questionable. Either way, let's just play a Reckless. And then next turn we can set up some nice attacks. Opponent forced to say go. Yeah, I think it's time to attack with everyone. Now the one issue is if her opponent has a summary judgment. I kind of need to wait until after our opponent blocks hybrid if I want to attack with both to be able to pump the one they block. But then we run right into a uh, summary judgment. So maybe I should just adapt one hybrid and attack with just one hybrid, one recluse. I could also just kill the Tithe Taker attack with everyone, add another hybrid to the board. I've got some options. I think I like Adapt Hybrid, Attack with Hybrid, Recluse the most. That way I get to save my removal for more problematic creatures. And I don't run into a Summary Judgment. They could of course still Summary Judgment to Recluse on their turn, but then they don't get to use their mana efficiently right now. Yeah, opponent chumps. So they might still have the judgment and they're just going after the recluse here. Alright. I'm okay with that exchange. Just attack with everyone. Play hybrid, play 3-2 Vandal seems fine. I could have gone for lethal by just bedacking the token and unscrewing their face, but it doesn't seem necessary, we're super far ahead. Don't think there's a card that saves the opponent from this position. Alright. If we go for the bedack and they have some combination of pump spells, things could get messy. But, yeah, we probably win either way. Alright, so we're on the draw. Fine hand. Gotta decide whether or not we play out the hybrid on turn 2, or maybe play the creeper on curve. Twilight Panther, so up against another black-white tech, and again a death touch creature, but this time we do have the Skewer the Critics as an answer. Alright, let's hope they don't have black mana. Boros, what's going on here? First a Celestial deck and now Boros. Maybe some uh, opponents that haven't drafted the set much. Let's just uh, play the hybrid now that we picked up additional untap lands. Could also be black, white, splashing red for maybe a get the point. No attacks. So I could just cure a panther to attack for two, or I can add a steeple creeper to the board, which seems better. Still nothing from the opponent, so seems more likely that they're just missing a color as well. So now I could skewer and get in for six, which is more tempting. Or I can just add more creatures to the board, this time a Wrecker. The Creeper can still trade for both Panthers, so it's not like a bad trade, necessarily. I think I like preserving the Creeper, though, when our opponent's kind of behind. So let's just kill Panther and attack. Alright, so opponent stuck on two lands, who knows whether they we're just splashing the reds and kind of got punished for it. But yeah, that's also one of the advantages of playing a ton of mana fixing with all the gates like we are, so that we can still support a splash while still having a solid mana base. So yeah, can't undervalue the mana fixing provided by gates. All right. So how about this one? No green mana, but we do get to curve Goblin into Vandal into potentially Gorklan Wrecker. Vandal can also kind of smooth out our draw. 
and we're on the draw, so we're likely to find green mana in time. I think I'm leaning yes. For now, we'll just play a goblin up against an Asper deck. Usually blue-white splash black, sometimes black-white splash blue. Alright, Oligarch, not typically a card you'd splash, so it seems more likely to be black-white splashing blue. Does do a good job of blocking the Vandal, even if we put a counter on it, so I might just send it in anyway as a 2-1 with haste. If I do that, then our opponent can just trade for the Goblin, and then next turn they'll have a Spirit Token to block the Vandal. So maybe I don't send the Goblin and wait until we have the green mana and just attack with the Vandal, which if it trades for the Oligarch is fine, since it would, it would trade no matter what. And I get to loot, probably discarding either the Hybrid or the Ruin. So, yeah, maybe second Hybrid is ambitious. We also need double green to adapt it. Now we've got a skewer as a potential answer for a spirit token. But yeah, we're in a bit of trouble here. Just had a speech about our mana base being consistent, but the quad mountain draw is not going to cut it. Alright, there's the forest, so now we can do some more things. Ors of Enforcer. I'm fine if we just trade for the Goblin to give them another Spirit Token, so that advantage starts accumulating. I could play a hasty Gorkland Wrecker or a 3-3 Gorkland Wrecker, which gets past the Death Touch creature quite nicely. Play the Forest, attack, opponents may or may not trade if they take it. I could also skewer plus or form hybrids. The 3-3 Wrecker still dies to Grotesque Demise from the opponents, still dies to Summary Judgments. I think I'll go with the attack and then see what they do. By playing the forest first we kind of incentivize the opponent also in blocking and I'm fine given that our deck has a lot of large creatures that need to get past the enforcer and we get to save secure the critics for something else, maybe kill a grasping thrall which would be an issue. And then for now just play a 4 or a 3-3 three, three wrecker. And take it from there. And then the Rumbling Ruins ability could also come up this game. And Senate Griffin, also fine target for Skewer. Yeah, let's attack, and then I can Hybrid plus Skewer. And next turn it's Rumbling Ruin time. If I draw a forest I might adapt the hybrid instead, we'll see. Sphinx is inside to draw two cards. Shardow Crab that we're unable to cast at the moment. We essentially have four blue sources to draw towards, open the gates, two guild gates and an island. Opponent still attacking with the spirit token, so hopefully no Kaya's Wrath. Nah, just a Knight Arbiter and maybe removal spell here. Final payment, sacking a spirit token, yep. So now, unless we draw forests, can't attack with the hybrids, can block the Arbiter, so that's gonna get in for two, and we didn't draw any gates despite having quite a few, so this Gate Colossus kind of stranded. Alright, forest at least means we get to adapt the Sorform hybrids, I'll adapt right away again in case opponent has a summary judgement, although I suspect that if they had it they would have played it already. But it's the only play we can make, so might as well. Opponent down to two. Alright, might have a chance here. We're also just one land away from Gate Colossus. Now if we draw any gate, we get to play Gate Colossus right away. 
can't adapt in response to judgment, but then our opponent can block the hybrid. We're forced to adapt the hybrid so it doesn't die to the Arbiter. And then they can cast the summary judgment. Do I even attack with the Wrecker? It just trades for a Spirit Token. So we're probably better off just playing Recluse. Looks like they might have a Counterspell as their last card. Thought Collapse. Alright, so... Opponent can put us down to 4. They can't afford to attack with the Spirit unless they draw a creature. And then, yeah, hopefully we top deck something. Either a land or a burn spell or not a creature. Alright, that lets us play Colossus. So, still not attacking with the Wrecker. And Colossus by itself is lethal. Any reason to make the attack anyway, just to trade for the Spirit Token. It's not like we can survive a plus two, plus two pump spell. And there's no one damage effect specifically, I don't think, that we need to worry about. I guess they could have, like, the Flyer that pumps other Flyers for one power. That's the only thing I can think of that would make me want to trade here. I don't think I'm supposed to attack. Alright, Messenger doesn't block Gate Colossus, so... Let's see if the Gate Colossus gets there. And I don't think I attack with the Wrecker. Doesn't really add much. Bam! Alright, sweet. The ability on Gate Colossus being quite relevant here. A level up. Alright, six and one. Things are going pretty smoothly so far. Alright, on the draw, fine opening hands. So easy keep. Haven't had to use the Creeper's ability yet, but we are able to do so if needed. Simic and a turn two hybrid. Got a few of those myself. Don't really want to run into an opposing pump spell when we have Badak Badassel at the ready. Verity Circle. Alright. That's a pretty slow card, so hopefully. We can win the game before that starts mattering. And for now just attack and play Steeple Creeper. And the next turn I might be able to play 2-drop and the deck the hybrid if they keep it back as a blocker. Gets in there, so they might have another blocker, maybe a Skitter Eel that we can kill. Senate Courier, alright. That's fine. So, attack with both. If they block hybrid, I can finish off the courier, or I can still go after the hybrid instead. And I'll probably add Growth Chamber Guardian to the board. I might honestly be better off just killing the Sword Form hybrid. But maybe I just wait until end of turn to do it. In case they play something else more relevant, or if they keep it back as a blocker, then that might give us a bit of information too. Savants. One top, one bottom. I do not have a second Growth Chamber Guardian, but uh, still a fine card. 2-2 two -two that adapts into a 4-4 four -four is quite strong. So now I think I'm just taking two and then attacking the Savants, so I can keep attacking with my other creatures here. So they do have something. Who knows what it is. If it's a fairy duelist, that could complicate matters a little bit. So that could be a reason not to make too many aggressive attacks. 
I can definitely adapt the Guardian, so that's a safe attacker. If they shrink down the Creeper, it still trades for the Duelists. So it's mostly the Sword Form Hybrid that's a bad attacker into a Fairy Duelist here. So I might want to keep that back. Then again, we do need to make sure to close out the game in time so the Verity Circle doesn't start taking over. I would like to play the Recluse and not having to pump the Guardian. I think I make them show it here. The Duelist is going to be good at some points. And if they don't have it, I don't want to have to play around it forever. Alright, I'll let damage happen. Did I have a pump spell? Applied by a Mancy, fair enough. Alright, that's pretty good too. Still probably just playing the Recluse here. So they can't adapt the hybrid quite yet, so we can block that. Chillbringer says otherwise, and also nice combo with the Verity Circle. Let's them draw a card. So we could be in a bit of trouble here. Opponent with a nice tempo play with the Biomancy. Now multiple flyers can start activating Verity Circle. But I guess we can just play infinite uh, recluses. So what do we need here? Something like a Collision Colossus could swing the game back into our favor. A Gate Colossus forces them to tap that down. Um, can just start adapting the hybrid, so we do have some plays here. Although the Drake speeds up the opponent's clock, so they can just kill us in two turns with the Flyers, potentially. We'll see what they decide to do. They're forced to block two of our creatures, so then they probably can't attack with the Flyers, maybe one of them. Opponent decides to stay back. Alright, I guess that's good for us. I can just attack with everyone. And then I may or may not adapt the hybrids based on what they do. If they don't force us to adapt, then maybe it's better to play Guardian plus hybrid. Those are fine trades. I'm happy killing the Chillbringer. It does force us to adapt, which is not ideal, since we end up wasting a bit of mana here. But at least we remove all the opponent's pressure, and then it's going to be Verity Circle drawing the opponent's extra cards. But we have a pretty stocked hand. So I think that's okay. So our opponent's kind of comfortable playing a longer game here, thanks to the Verity Circle. Just wants to make sure they can survive. But now if they are forced to use Verity Circle, we can take that extra time to deploy more threats and our opponent's going to start falling behind on board. And if they add more to the board, then they can't tap down the Recluse. So don't hit our spot now. Amplifier, good too. So I'm sure they'll tap down the Recluse here and then I get to go Amplifier plus Probably Sorrow Form Hybrid, since that threatens lethal all by itself, as opposed to the Growth Chamber Guardian. We're still at 10. Three creatures that are potentially all lethal, so single Verity Circle activation is not enough. And yeah, Pwn just explodes. Sweet, so... Was looking kind of sketchy for a second there, but... Uh, Opponent deciding to play defense, and then we were able to turn it around. Alright, so pretty clean 7 wins. One loss to the Orzov deck with the multiple Death Touch creatures, and then double Inheritance to drain us out. But uh, pretty smooth sailing otherwise. Alright, let's crack some packs. And not many rares and mythics left in the set for me to unlock, so it's just gems for me, and maybe some wild cards if we get lucky. Alright. Not bad, not bad. So that's gonna do it for the Ravnica Allegiance draft today. So I wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.